Hey guys, this is Gamer Cal. Actually, this is a little bit too low down. There we go. Proper volume now. This is uh, adjusting stuff on the fly. This is Gamer Cal playing Toho, the genius of Sapphiros. Last time we had to do a take two against Genji and Matsuba because they, uh, well, Matsuba kind of insta killed Alice in my initial run, which shall never be shown because I'm only, you know, showing the good stuffs. But yeah, they kind of killed me. And that was that was annoying, but uh, yeah, we have a massive task ahead of us. A party's gonna have to split into three. So before that, I want to take care of as many other things as I can here. Um, the characters we shall be dealing with, with the exception of Flounder, because unfortunately she is not in the uh, the game right now. But uh, yeah. Uh, Everybody else, basically, Koichi's not here either, but that picture is cute, damn it, and I wanted to use it, so the sorts of characters we'll be dealing with to get the final formations that we can for now uh, here. There are two formations that we will not be able to get just now because Sana is not strong enough yet. Uh, they are from the only other characters we won't have really spoken to by now, or the other stages we haven't gotten stuff from. Uh, Kanako and Suako do give you formations, but they will only give you formations when Sanai hits level 50 and power level 70. Right now she is level 46 I think it was? 46 or 47? 47, 47, and her power level is only 56. Which means I would have to grind for it. I don't fancy grinding for it just now. But if I don't have it by the end of the game, or by the uh, the final stage at the very least, then I will most likely get the formations then. Because especially the... Um, well, they're both exceptionally good formations, actually. Uh, Karnikos is really, really, really good in general. And Soakos is very good for the final boss. So I do want them. I'm just not willing to grind all the way up to that power level at the moment. Anyway, if I am not mistaken, correct. Once you have reached the late bed temple, you are able to go back to uh, Romelia and get one final formation from her. So yeah, we're not exactly done yet, but we have reached the final stronghold, the final uh, overworld section of the game. So, we're getting close, as is said, punishment's just around the corner, so we need one final formation from you, and a proper punishment shall be delivered. Yes, there we go. So the formation that we have acquired here, let's see if we can just show it off here. Uh, I was going to use the toy sky dance, but uh, I think it was this one? Yeah. Um, this formation doesn't have too many negatives, it doesn't really have uh, gigantic positives to it, but the defense down is really not too high, and it's one of the better like physical attack formations here. It does operate on one single line, so Alice can still be used in this formation as a sort of defensive-esque feature to it, which is quite nice. And yeah, it's not. It's it's more of the sort of five percent category. Like I think you get maybe ten percent more attack, five percent more speed, and five percent less defense, sort of thing, on average. Those numbers are not completely accurate. I don't have the list up with me, but uh, it's not a huge detriment. And the buff, whilst not as massive as some of the other formations, is significant enough that it's worth using. So. Yeah, it's one of my sort of favoured formations if I do end up having like four physical attackers, but that's extremely rare. So, I mean, there are really only four physical attackers that you get for the main game. So, <laughs> yeah, Yomu, Natori, Sakio, and uh, Moko are basically your only like proper physical attackers. I sort of counts, I mean she is technically physical attacking but she's used for her support skills rather than her attacking because her attacking is unfortunately pretty bad. So yeah, that is uh, that is the formation from Vermilia. I don't think we've had enough Satori last word uses yet to get her formation but I'm going to go and check anyway because why not. 
uh, it would sort of segue quite nicely into the um, into where we are going soon. Also, I'm using the Stormbringer for Notori at the moment, just because I want something that's not the Rune Axe. Which reminds me, I need to do Growth Tree stuff with Notori later, because I still have points in the Axe Tree, whereas uh, the Axe Tree doesn't do her any good at the moment, so yeah. But we are going to quickly go ahead and check if we have used the last word enough times yet. If not, well, we'll try and grind it out as we're doing stuff here. So if we talk to it, so yeah, we haven't done enough yet. So we've used it at least the 10 times that we needed for uh, Orin, but we haven't used it 25 times for Utsuho yet, which is a bit of a butt. But that's okay, because this will lead us to the second thing here. So Iku does give us a formation as well. And the way that we get Iku's formation is that we have to kill the giant oarfish a total of 50 times. And then we go ahead and talk to her and she gives us a thing. As you can see, we have killed it 15 times so far, so we have 35 more to go. And there is a way of, you know, not a way of doing this as such, because they are just like uncommon enemies, but there is one room in stage 13 which I think you've got to go through stage 14 in order to reach. There's one room in stage 13 which usually has multiples of them per encounter, and that's the room that we are going to utilize for this. Now, I don't remember exactly which room that is off the top of my head, so I'm going to be basically cutting pretty soon, and uh, I will find it and then tell you which room, like, letter and stuff it is. Because you see, each room, of course, has got its own letter in the bottom corner, so... So I have no idea, thinking on this now, a bit of a off topic here, but I have no idea why Kiene gave us the formation last time round, because my playtime is apparently just under 90 hours at the moment, whereas she's supposed to come in after 100. Unless they changed that in Weekend and it wasn't, uh, wasn't on the site or anything. That might have changed, it might have been like 80 in Weekend or something. Although I think I was... whatever, it doesn't matter. So I will go find that room and we shall go kill some more fish. So I shall be back then. seriously hate this place so much, and now that that switch has been triggered, I have to go the other fucking way around too. Oh my god, this place is just the absolute worst. Okay, so this seems to be the room, but I'm in the wrong sort of bit to take full advantage of this, but... Oh well, we'll, we'll see what we can do. So... The idea here is not to Acid Storm, because that's going to get me uh, triple countered here. Um, the idea that I have here is basically uh, kill as many of these in this room, obviously, as possible. But Yomu needs to instant kill three, uh, no, 30 enemies in order to actually... Uh, go ahead and get her formation. So whilst I'm killing the rest of the targets here, my idea is kind of try and get her thing done as well by um, basically just going ahead and dealing with that, you know. Um, try and just insta-kill stuff using her basic attacks and we'll try, we'll just see if that, if that works out. I don't know, everything... Ooh, wow, we actually get the weapon as well. Everything will just kind of die, though, with these. That's the... The sort of problem with this is that Yomu's attacks are really strong by now. So, you know, compared to the enemies in this area, at the very least. Biakaran is still getting full experience from this place. 
That is really bad. But anyway, this is room G, so you do want to try and make your way around to that. And just so you can see, the um, the auto bomb was the 10% effect activation shield. It's the defend all light shield that you would get from here, but it's only 10% accurate, if you will. Like it only works 10% of the time. So not the most reliable of shields. I have no idea where that came from, but whatever. Uh, we have to make our way back round to the room from the other side now, so I shall meet you back there. And of course, because we're already done with this stage, all of those items that we didn't get before are now starting to show up, so the new moon shield was the magic defense mid-tier shield of this time. So, relatively decent, didn't block anything in particular, did give more resistance than other shields of its uh, era though, so that's kind of nice. Okay, I may have been mistaken about exactly which room it was. It doesn't seem to have been room G, it actually seems... You know, when I move in a bit further, it's uh, the next room over, which I shall once again show which room it is when we are done with this fight here. So Yomu is getting a couple of instant deaths here. I don't think it's going to be enough to actually give her the uh, ability she needs here, though. Like, I don't think it's going to be enough instant deaths in order to trigger stuff. For, uh, for her formation and whatnot. So this is room K, but it's if you're in room G, it's in the top right hand corner, I'll just show you. That's, uh, that's where we're at. So it's not too far from where I thought it was, but I may have been slightly mistaken about exactly where we are. I'm gonna give all the induction monitoring stuff here. Like This is as much induction as I can give and yeah, there's there's a fish in most encounters at this point, so I think this is where we need to be for it. So now it's just a case of clearing pretty much all the enemies in this room so we can have as many more fish knockouts as possible. If you wanted to cherry pick the fights, you can get fights with three or fish at a time with this uh, in this room, so that is something you can do. And wow, Yomi really isn't... Why did she attack twice though? Did she just do two counter attacks? But then why did they only do one damage? What? Okay, that's um... That is unusual. I've never ever seen that before, but I guess that might be part of the... Strike back counter rate thing? I have no idea what just happened there. Oh well, whatever. You can see all fish fights. So let's go. And of course, because we're done with this stage now, we're getting all of the. Uh, you know, synthesis material drops as well. Although that might actually come in handy because a uh, meteor. No, it's not a meteorite at this point, so you're by a mountain rock. I think I needed one of those in order to make. Uh, what was it? One of the lucky items, right? I needed a Yokai Mountain Rock and four meteorite or some stupid thing like that. So that might still be useful. Well, Yukari sisters can still show up sometimes, and we still get extra levels off of that, so level 46 for Yomu, heck yeah.
And as Biakou gains another level as well, we actually get a Water Shard from the fight, so that's pretty good. I'm hoping... have I reset the enemies here? No. Uh, I've reset some of them. So, to reset enemies in this game, you need to, I believe, just say, you know, use healing spots at enough stages. Uh, usually, three stages is enough. Um, yeah, if you... Once you use some healing spots, enemies will start respawning in the stages. And that's basically what you need to do, but I guess I didn't use enough of them because only that one enemy respawned in here. Kind of unlucky when you think about it, but oh well, that's just how it goes. Okay, so we have eliminated 50 giant oarfish, which is good, so now we just need to go and talk to Iku. I've also had a boatload of instant deaths from Yomu on the way like through all of these, so I should be able to get Yomu's formation as well, and then that just leaves Satori's, which even though I've been recording for absolutely ages at this point, uh, just for the record, my file size right now is like 528 meg, and that usually is indicative of a recording session of at least an hour, but uh, it might not be that long actually, it might, because sometimes this game doesn't produce as large a file size simply because um, the, the areas aren't quite as intensive. Like, this is a lot of the same general sort of colours and everything, so you're not always going to get giant files out of that, but I have gone to different places as well, so who knows. But it generally is an indicator that uh, I have been recording for a fair while. So... Yeah, Satori's one is... it's a bit weird. I don't know exactly how many... Uh, things, uh, how many times I still have to use the last word? Probably about six or seven. But I have an idea as to how I'm gonna go about, or how I'm gonna approach getting it. So, yeah. Basically, exhaustion and stuff. Yeah, sure. You all again, blah blah blah. I probably should have been facing a different direction here, but oh well. Mm-hmm, because we've kind of killed them all. Uh, yes, these huge fish, they're, they're kind of really painful to deal with in the sense that let them run next time. <laughs> well, they don't exactly run, but we do get the Thunderline formation, so... Yeah, well, you should do, Raymu, because you, you are the villain, let's, let's be honest here. So, the Thunderline formation. It is a formation that cuts a bit of defense, but it gives you uh, lightning resistance and boosting power, as well as raising your speed a little bit. It is in the shape of a lightning bolt, which is kind of cool. And it also is a line formation, like the uh, title of the thing would say. So that helps out in getting you, uh, you know, Alice stuff. Uh, despite the defense down, Alice can defend in this formation pretty well, and there is one specific use we will have for this formation later on. So, that is definitely a good one to have. So, I mentioned I had a way of helping to get Satori's last word here, and, you know, it won't... It's when I say that, what I really mean is it's uh, it's gonna help speed the process up a little bit. It's not going to make the process painless by any means. It, this is still gonna be a pretty painful process. But the way I'm gonna do it is I'm going to basically be switching my party to a two-person formation, and we shall have our commander be Sunai. Because Sunai's last uh, commander effect is a last word up, and the it doesn't matter how many people you have in your formation, but if you so long as you have a formation, so we'll just have Alice here. Why not? Uh, if so long as you have a formation, you can use the free fight uh, form here, and 
this is not only useful for just having more um, characters, well, all the characters in the line for Alice and having extra speed and stuff, this formation has a hidden benefit of last word chance plus one, and I don't think that matters how many characters you have in the free fight formation, so long as they are in said formation you should be okay. Formation, 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 blah 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 blah, you know what I mean. So. With that in mind, I'm going to give the weakest... I mean, I'm going to actually have to give a weapon, but I'm basically going to give really weak weapons. I'm going to go into a lower stage, and uh, I reckon I could probably just get away with going into the... Uh, well, not here, because this isn't a stage dump button. Uh, I've been saying dump button quite a bit recently. I have no idea why. But I should be able to get away with just going into a stage like this, and... Uh, they still do a bit too much damage here, uh, so uh, Moonzooka should be okay. Basically, the idea is that I will want to just do little bits of damage, and we'll get the last word up as more often because Sunai increases it, and we have plus one charge from the uh, from the formation. So. That ought to let us get stuff a little bit more frequently, frequently enough to the point where I should be able to, you know, sort of quickly pick this up. It is down to chance. I don't remember... Uh, I'm pretty sure there is actually a, a way of working it out. What, to, what you get from it, like how how last words are done. I'm pretty sure there was a formula for it, but I don't remember ever seeing it on, you know, my travels. So, I just, I have no idea exactly how it's calculated. So, oh well, we'll, we'll find out as we go. And, uh, yeah, that's essentially how it's going to go. So... I have no idea how many times I need to use this thing. I'm just going to attack things in the face until I get it. And uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, I think I'm going to go for five uses of it, and then we'll see from there how many times I. There we go. Well, that's this is a pretty good example of the the way this is working right here. So essentially, the idea behind this is that with less people in the formation, Satori gets targeted more often. And I know getting targeted is part of, you know, getting hit by attacks is part of Last Word Charge. But wow, these, these guys just aren't attacking at all now. That's weird. I, I thought they would just auto-attack themselves. But oh well. It's not the point. I can just keep using this here. So... Yeah, the long, the more, uh, the more times you attack and the more times you get attacked, the faster it charges up. So the idea is that Satori can get hit as many times as possible in a two-person formation, and she will have as many um, chances to attack as well. So. Yeah, fortunately she can still die, which is a bit of a problem, so, yeah. But it's not too big a deal, because you don't have to win the fight in order to have this count. So basically I just need to do this another two or three times, and we shall hopefully have our formation. So I shall meet you back when that is done. Okay, so that didn't take quite as long as I thought, but I needed to use the last word a lot more times than I expected to. I guess I'd only used it maybe 12 times then, because I needed to go back and use that another 5 or 6. I used it about 7, maybe 8 times? No, 7 times at first. Utsu wouldn't give me the stupid formation, so yeah. <laughs> Don't know how you could say she's working well when she's lying down on the job still, but uh, yeah, we we are working pretty hard, and yeah, it's it's kind of not. <laughs> it's it has indeed been a rough ride. She said this to Orin earlier as well, but uh, Oku of course has a special tactic, 
And that is... Uh, okay, the Atomic Defense. So this formation is actually for three people. So we shall just go ahead and take a look at it here. We might end up needing to use this at some point, who knows. Uh, the back character does get magic, which is uh, magic up is really good. And the front two characters get defense up without losing any speed, which is kind of rare. And yeah, for a three person formation, this is actually really quite good. Because you could use somebody like, I don't know, Patchouli in the back, and she would very, very rarely get targeted. And she could just launch high power magic. Obviously, it's a three person formation, so that extremely limits it, but it could still be good. So finally, the last thing we need to do is we actually need to go and get your moves. I'm kind of just assuming at this point that I have instant killed enough enemies. If I haven't, then I shall promptly do so, I suppose. But yeah, we should have killed enough by now because she probably killed like 30 when she was just in the party just now. So here you go. Give us a formation, please, as she will, because you see she's. Uh, Walking in slowly, so yeah, Yobu Kumpak has returned! And very, very cute face to Yuko is still here. So, uh, yeah, tremendously increased indeed. <laughs> and, uh, there is a reward. A four person formation. This, this is actually an interesting formation right here. Wow! Yuko's special tactics. Oh man. <laughs> that was automatic, by the way. The whole uh, the whole text thing there. So yes, and now she will permanently say, "Hungry, give me food." And yeah, we can't. So the formation is uh, this one down here, where we have a very balanced setup here. We might well use this in the next stage. It's one of the reasons I wanted to get these sorts of things out of the way now is because the next stage of course is splitting us into three different parties. We only have 12 characters so we can't make complete uh, setups out of this. We could have all three parties having four characters or we might end up splitting one three character and five and uh, you know, the final one, depends how it all sets up, but having formations like this available is definitely something that is worthwhile. The reason this one is a little bit better than the Trickster formation is that um, two characters, I mean, okay, you only have one character of magic in this one anyway, but uh, two characters get attack and defense up whereas two characters get magic, so it's a bit more balanced than the uh, the previous one. And considering the characters that we have now, having more balance is definitely a good thing. With that said, of course, we do have formations like this one here that um, we can use instead for giving extra speed or, you know, Shikigami Assault for physical attacking, so... Yeah, you know, there's there's other ones that we can use instead, but if we're using a balanced four-person setup for our stats, you know, with two two mages, two warriors, then yeah, this is a really really good formation, and I think it's uh, it's not quite so kind to area healing. That's like the one disadvantage. I think with the trickster formation, you could area heal the back three characters in one go. And obviously, free fight you could area heal all four, which is really good. And um, yeah, Scarlet Shoot you can area heal three as well, I think. Whereas, yeah, Shikigami Assault you can definitely area heal three. Square Barrier you could only heal two at a time anyway. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. We don't really talk about Horai Forest, because yeah, sure, you can, uh, you can area heal with it, but. This is such a weirdly bad formation that, uh, yeah, I will need to double check actually because it says the rear character doesn't get any bonuses here, but surely they have to get some sort of benefit from that. But anyway, the only other two formations we can get in the main game, like I've said, are for getting Sunai to level 50 and power level 70. 
which we'll do at the very end of the game. So with that said, this has been Game Account playing Toho, the Genius of Sapphires. It's been going on for way too long at this point. Next time, I suppose we're taking this place on? Question mark. I really should deal with Satori and learn skills at some point soon, but she needs to be level 50 for some of the ones that I want to get, and she's not quite level 50 yet. She hopefully will be level 50 by the end of this stage though, so maybe when we're done with the next stage I will go back and get more skills for Satori, because she's got a lot of the offensive skills I want, but the support skills not so much. So we'll work on that next time. Uh, yeah, next time we have a stage transition. So until then, take care.